The word of God says that there is a way to man that seemeth right. But the end is what? It leads to death. So the, the scripture is saying, look, make sure that you're standing firm, that you don't find yourself leaning. But the question is, how do we trust God every day? How do we see trust in God in our everyday life? Using the same scripture, if you look at Romans chapter 12, it parallels it. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. And do not be conformed by, by the patterns of this world, but be, let your mind be renewed. Your mind be renewed. So what is it saying? It's saying that every day you wake up, you have to make a choice and you have to be intentional in trusting God. You have to place your body. Once you get off of the bed, you're placing your body on another bed. You're placing it right on the altar of God. And on the altar of God, what you're saying is, I want to become a living sacrifice. How does that make sense? You're living to the will of God and you're sacrificing your will. You're living to the plans of God and you're killing your plans. You are, you are laying on the altar of God and you're saying that I am done with my understanding standing but i'm going according to your word Amen. so every day you get up and you say i'm not going to brush my teeth i'm placing my body on the altar of god and i'm trusting you all the way you have to be intentional somebody say intentional trust is not built overnight that's one thing you have to realize that maybe you say then tomorrow i'm going to get up and i'm just going to put my body around your altar it's good but don't expect that right away, because you made up your mind, I'm going to trust, then it must happen overnight. No, trust doesn't really happen overnight. It doesn't happen that way, but it is learned and strengthened through relationship. Sister, can I, brother, can I use your example? Could you get up? Let me tell you, let me, let me, let me um, what's your name? Kobe. Kobe. Everybody clap for Kobe. So I, I just put him on the spot. Please don't be offended. That's eh? cool. Kobe, if I told you, stay here till Tuesday at 5 p.m. And when I come back, I'll bring you $1,000 just for waiting for me. And I provide all food for you. Would you wait for me? Why would you wait for me? So, so you... I trust what you have to say, and I trust that you have... I trust your word because of who you are and who I trust you to be. Um, I, like that. I like that. He's trusting me, who I am. When I'm t who I, who, what do you say? Like who I am. And even the way you're talking is so nice. I can't even, even say my, for myself. I'm like, what? So, so who am I? Uh, I see you as a man of God and somebody I trust to filter his word. Okay. So where do you know me from, though? Have you talked on the phone? I have not. The, the times that I've come and I've, I've heard you speak, um, I've been inclined to what you had to say. But you've never spoke to me yourself. I've never, I've never, sir. Thank you. Sit down. God bless you, Kobe. Let's clap for our, let's clap for our boss. <laughs> I like the guy's faith, but brother, you have to be careful. <laughs> because tell it, the Bible even tells us there are people who preach, but they live another life. The only way you should be able to trust me is when you know me. That is why we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a relationship with God that I've heard the word priest. So because of that, I go, no, your faith in God and the trust that you have in him is built through relationship. The strength of every relationship is built on trust. If you say you know me, it means that you can trust my word. But you must come to a place whereby you know that you know how because I've spoken to you many times. I've seen your track record and you've proven yourself to be true. And that's how we know that, wow, I can trust that individual. We see it in the Bible, Abraham and um, Amalek. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 20 that Abraham rose up to Amalek, I think they're just there to talking and all of a sudden the Bible says that he kind of looked at the wife and was like, Sarah looks nice. Who is she? He said, she's my sister. He said, she's my sister. Let's go to Genesis chapter 20 verse 11. Genesis 20, 11. Now I want us to read something here. 
Abraham said, I did it because I thought there is no fear of God at all in this place. And they will kill me because of my wife. So God speaks to Abraham. He moves by faith. But when he gets to Genesis 20, the Bible says that he's afraid for his life, so he lies. He comes to a place whereby I have faith in God. I have a relationship. But I just don't know if you could save me out of this situation. So he's like, should I say she's my wife? If I say that, they'll kill me. But if I say she's my sister, they'll let me live. And it was true. They let him live. But the Lord stopped um, the, uh, Abimelech from touching Sarah. And he comes back and says, yo, you lied to me. He was like, bro, I thought you were going to kill me. Now, he, Abraham has a relationship with God. But he's at a place where his trust in God is growing. So he gets here and then he lies. But let's look at Genesis chapter 22. And let's see what he does there. Genesis 22. The Bible says it's a story of when the Lord tells Abraham. Because of time, we won't read it. He goes and t God tells Abraham, give me your firstborn child. And sacrifice him for me. And he does that. And then the Bible says that in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 9. He said that he did it because he had faith. That God would raise his son back from the dead. Listen. It's not that God would save his son from dying. He said that he had faith. He trusted God. That he, God would raise his son back from the dead. How do we go from chapter 20. When you're afraid of saying your wife is your wife. And you call her your sister. And you're scared for your own neck. But in 22. Now you go on and say. Maybe even if he dies, you will find a way to resurrect him. There's growth in the relationship and there's growth in trust. That he's come to a place that in chapter 20, I wasn't sure. I thought you were going to kill me. Chapter 22, even if my son dies, you'll raise him back to life. There is growth in trust. And so now when you test the relationship between Abraham and God, now you can see. That truly the man really has trust in God. That in a situation which is impossible, the Lord can raise his son back to life. So what is the evidence that you truly trust God? Number one is this. When you have a willingness to wait on God. Genesis 16.2. Somebody read that for me. Genesis 16.2. I'm just going to break this down and go here. Because this word is needed for but for this year, that somebody here, you need to trust God. And Sarah said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Listen, go into my servant, meaning go and have sex with my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. The willing, how I know you have trust is your willingness to wait. God said, Sarah, Abraham, I'm going to bring you a child, which will be a blessing to the world. All she heard was, I'm going to have the child. How I'm going to have the child, I don't care. So I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Hubby, go and sleep with Hagar. And please, when you do it, do it well and let her have a child. She didn't say it like that, but I said it. But she was in a rush to make the promises of God happen. And that's, that's where we fail in life. We believe that God has said it, then I just need to hurry up and just make it happen. But the Bible says here in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. What does it say? Let's read it quickly. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. Isaiah 28, verse 16. It says, therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am the one who has laid a foundation in Zion, a stone a tested, a tested stone. Keep going. A precious stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. So when you believe in God, you don't move too quick. And that's our issue in this generation. We want everything quick. So you say you trust God, but your actions don't show it. Your actions show that I like to go to church. I like to hear the word. But when things need to happen, I need to make it happen. And the Bible was saying that she made haste. She said, Abraham, go. 
and sleep with her. That wasn't God's plan. And even Romans chapter 10, verse 11, it says, They that believe in God shall never be put to shame. So the question here is that she rushed her husband. The husband went and slept with the servant. The baby came, and the Bible says, Then Sarah became angry. How are you going to get angry and be ashamed of the thing that you put together? How are you going to be mad at the fact that I decided that hubby go sleep with And that's how some people are. You're the one that told me to do it. I'm sure Abraham was like, bro, how is it my fault? You told me to do it. Now you want me to kick her out? The scripture says that they that believe in God shall not be put to shame. So if truly you heard from God, why do you feel ashamed about the very thing that you brought together? I remember there was a job when I was growing up. I needed money. I was broke. So I went on Craigslist. If you go on Craigslist, if Craigslist is the first place you go look for a job, then I don't know. But I was struggling. So I saw this thing, looking for sales managers and marketing managers. I was like, what? Managing position? Send your resume. I was like, bet, I'm going to do it. And I didn't pray about it. I didn't ask God about it. I just went up and said, I'm going to do it. I get there. I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm about to be a manager. They said they're going to hire me on the spot. I said, Mom, I'm about to be a manager. Hey, you used to think I was going to be a, just a boy running around. Now I got a management position. So I went to the place far. I drove to Ashburn, drove there, sat there. And I get there, and it's like 20 of us. Hey, guys, thank you. And you know, it's weird when they have the posting, but they don't really have all the details, like the pay and everything. That's why you know it's sketchy. Just, just show up. Just show up, and we'll tell you, and you just know it's sketchy. I show up, I get there, and it's like, here, so you guys are going to be selling knives. <laughs> Go door to door. Anybody else see them, them jobs? Them do- yeah, yeah, right? I said, ah, how can I go back home and tell my mom I'm selling knives? You see, I rushed because all I knew that I heard a word that I'm going to be rich. Maybe this is the avenue, so I made a way. And the Bible says, those who believe, in Romans 8, 11, it says, those who believe shall not be put to shame. I went back home in shame because I really didn't believe God. I just wanted something for myself, and I believed in myself. And now I had to go back home and tell my mom, Mommy, hmm, that job, I don't think I can do it. She was like, ah, but you said you're going to be a man. I said, Mom, it's okay. It wasn't the will of God. Now I know it's not the will of God. You know, somebody say mercy. You know, so in life, if you want to see the evidence that you really trust God, you have to be willing to wait. Tell your neighbor, say, wait. Don't be a haste like Sarah and say, go and sleep with her. No, you must wait. Number two, when you are only concerned with the glory of God, that's when you know that you want to trust God. When you are only concerned with the glory of God, you don't care about it's about me. It's all about me. The same verse. Let's go. Genesis uh, chapter 16, verse 2b. Same verse. I could, since I read it already, she said that, Abraham, go and sleep with the servant. That was her not waiting. Then she said, maybe when you do that, I would have a child. All Sarah wanted was a, was a son. All God wanted was a way to bring forth his only begotten son. Abraham, the Bible said, God told him that through your seed, the rest of the world will be blessed. So God knew I had to set Abraham up so that he would be the person, his family would bring forth the Messiah of the world, the Savior of the world. But all Sarah could think about was, I want a child. She wasn't thinking about the bigger picture. She was being selfish and thinking about herself. And that's when you think about yourself all the time, that is evidence that you don't trust God. I remember this story. This, this girl, I remember everybody went around and was telling me that, yo, yeah, you know, this is my past life, so let me, let me put that there before I continue. Disclaimer. But somebody's like, bro, you can't keep a girl. I was like, what are you talking about? They're just not, they're just not for me, bro. Just, it's not working out. I don't, I don't really like them, bro. They're like, bro, you need to do better. You need to, bro, I can't keep a sword. I was like, bro. So I said, the next girlfriend I get, I will not let her go. Bro, I made, I said, my next girlfriend, I'll keep her like, I'll hold her like this. Because I just wanted to prove to everybody that I could keep somebody. Hey, the next girlfriend that came, Nana, if I could let her go that second, I wish I would have did it. I didn't mention, you mean I can mention names, but this testimony is kind of rough, so I don't want to mention names. But, 
I remember I was dating her and I was trying to avoid all the red flags because I just wanted to prove to everybody that I could keep a girl. But I was not thinking about maybe in the marriage that God will place me in, he has a bigger plan for the world. What I was thinking about is what, is, what, is other, what are other people saying? And I was allowing the opinion of men to cause me to just be stuck in a relationship that I hated. Hey, what I went through in that relationship about was serious. Hey, one day I was sitting in my car. We were there waiting for somebody at the airport. The, the, it was a flight from Ghana. Bruh. We were stuck in the, like, I was in the car for like two hours. I was sleepy. I was tired. So I went to sleep. I woke up from my nap. All I see is this girl's face in my face. I went to your phone and this is what I see. I said, hey, Jesus. <laughs> Talking about trust issues, man. That one day, that's when I trust issue really started. There. But just, just for last. But what, what, what I'm saying is that I, I remained in something that I knew wasn't healthy. Because I just wanted people to say, yeah, you've done well. And that's what a lot of us are in. Instead of trusting God, all we care about is that job needs to make me successful. But if you really like that job, why do you go in on Mondays upset? Why are you becoming like Sarah saying that I'm the one that made the birth of Ishmael come to pass, but I dread it now? You made that job. You went to that interview. You sat there and said, yes, I love it. Now you go and then you're upset. Because you're thinking about your pocket, not thinking about the purpose of God for your life. Amen. Some of you are in relationships. You know you need to get out. But because of what people will say. So because, you know, I'll, I'll tell them one lady, I said, look, when you be on Instagram and you see, like, you publicize your boo or your man, your man publicize his girl, and they got pictures everywhere. When they break up, it's the weirdest thing. <laughs> they don't know how to delete the pictures after. Look, if you announce to all of us that you are dating, you must also announce that you are broken up. You must announce it. If every day, hey, we are the mall, hey, we are cheesecake, hey, we are here, then tell us, hey, you are broken up. <laughs> you, 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 got, you also got to tell us. But the thing is that some of you, just because you don't want to go through that, you, just, you, you remain in the thing and the purpose of God. Sam said something. It's not that God needs you for that purpose to happen. He will skip you and find somebody else. But I said, not for me. Me and my house, we shall do the will of God. Because it ain't about us. It's not about the relationship I see myself in, the job I'm having. I just want to fulfill God's will. I just want to trust God, and I want his glory to be seen. And we must come to a place that I'm happy you're a doctor, I'm happy you're a lawyer, I'm happy you're a marketing manager like myself, but you must ask yourself, did you get there because you trusted God, or did you make it happen on your own? And these are the questions you must ask yourself. You know, so the reason it took, another thing I noticed, the reason it took Abraham and Sarah so long to have a baby because you got to understand, God wants to have the glory out of your life. And he doesn't want anybody else to say that I helped you. So the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11 to 12, it says that God had to give Sarah strength to give birth. And the Bible says, Abraham, even he was so, his body was so dead but the Lord resurrected it so that he'll be able to give birth. So some of you may be standing here that, but Lord, the, the delay is too much. Lord, the laughing is too much. What do I do? Lord, when is it going to happen for me? God is setting you up so that he gets the glory and him alone. And you have to trust him that he wants to make sure that everything else fails so that you're only looking at him. So that when the glory comes, you can't share it with anybody, but he's the one that has it all for himself. And that's why he did it with Sarah and Abraham. But we see here that they dealt with Ish Ishmael. They had Ishmael. You know, um, Sarah was upset that, hey, hubby, even though I told you I didn't trust God and I told you to do that, I'm mad. So I want you to kick them out. If I was Abraham, I said, what kind of troublesome woman is this? You told me to do this now? You're telling me to kick them out? And now you see that it, what Abraham and Sarah started in the spirit, now they have moved into the flesh. Galatians chapter 3 verse 3 says, Oh, you who, was, who started so well in the spirit have now ended in the flesh. And that is what some of us have done. We started well, but then when we noticed that there's some small delay, then we started to get scared. We noticed that, man, I didn't pass that class. What's going to happen to me? 
oh lord this relationship didn't work out what's what's next how am i going to start again one girl said so i got to start this talking stage again and say what's your favorite color <laughs> some these are the thoughts that beat our mind like so what what do we do and we notice that we start doing things because we're scared we start moving into the flesh you stop praying and you start calling people you stop Praying and you move into DMs. You stop praying and you start looking for jobs. Why? Wow, because you just want money. You don't want to fulfill the purpose of God. You move from spirit and then you go into flesh. But what I want to ask you today, and this is the question, you can't forget this. Who, whose hands are you in? Who do you trust and who do you place your life in? The reason why some of us are frustrated, Echo, is at the fact that we think there's an issue with us, our personalities, and our characters. I'm telling you, we have been saved by grace. The Holy Spirit lives in us. The issue is really not you, Echo. The issue is whose hands are you in? Is either your flesh or the Spirit of God? Are you giving way for the flesh to have its way with you? And if you do that, you'll be frustrated. That's why some of you are sitting here frustrated in life. Because you feel like nothing is working. It is not working because you're allowing yourself to direct your life. But if you put your life in the hands of God, all things are possible through Christ who strengthens me. Echo, come. Let me, let me give you an example. Echo, can you sing? Yeah. You can sing? Yeah. No, they say no. I need to find somebody who can sing. Ben, can you sing? Okay, come. Let me, get, let, let me just sing a song for me. I'm going to sing this song, guys. Yeah, I know. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. All together. Just wait. Lovely. Oh, just trust me. We're talking about trust. Okay. All together. Wonderful. To me. Okay, sing. Yes, sing, 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 sing. I can't sing. No, yeah, just sing. Just sing the same song. Just sing how you know how to do it. Nobody's judging you. Sing. Here I am to worship. <laughs> Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that. You're my God. You're all together worthy. So that's the best. No, 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 no. I want to prove a point. So this, this is what it is. Now look, I said when it comes to life, the reason why we're afraid is because, and we're, and we're, 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 we're losing faith is because of who our lives uh, depend on or whose hand we're in. Now this mic sounded good in my, in my, <laughs> in my hand. When I put it in the hands of my wonderful sister, I'm sure if you didn't know this was an illustration, the sound man in the back would have turned her joint down. And somebody would have said, somebody would have said that maybe this mic is making too much noise. The issue is not the mic. The issue is whose hand the mic is in. You can sit, no, don't sit down. Look, this pen. This pen, I can't draw for nothing. If you ask me to draw you, I'll make you a stick figure. But if you put this pen in the hands of my older brother, he's a crazy artist, you will see the potential of the pen. The point I'm trying to make, you can sit down. I wasn't trying to bless you, but great job. God bless you. God bless you. Clap for your sister. The point I'm trying to make is that you're frustrated in life because you place your own life into your own hands. If you place your life into the hands of God, we will see the purpose of your life and the full potential of it as well. It's all about the hands you find yourself in. And that's when you begin to blossom. That's when you begin to live out what God has for you. But a lot of us have taken life into our what? Our own hands. So the Bible tells us that don't trust the arm of flesh. Why? Because it can fail you. So if Chris, I mean Chris, Chris Bama here. I mean, bro, this guy has a security business. This dude is a professional 
uh, has a whole business. They do security and everything. If this guy, if, if I'm, somebody put a hit out on me and said, yeah, we want to kill you, want to take your life. I, 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 the first thing I would do, I'll pray. But I'll probably say, let me go and hire Chris to help me. Now, all Chris can do is probably, probably do like 24 hours in a day. After that, what will happen? He'll feel sleepy, right? No matter how many people he brings, they're going to have to change shifts because they'll end up getting sleepy. Now, if one man says, Yao, I love you, and that's why you trust no man, but you just believe in them. Trust only God. Because trust is complete dependency on the very thing. Chris could have good intentions and say that, Yao, I want to help you. I'm going to stay at your house. Nobody will do anything. I'm going to be here 24-7 watching. Even though his intentions are good, because he's human, he wouldn't be able to do it. He wouldn't be able to do it. Why? Because he's human. But the Bible says our God never sleeps nor slumbers. So what does that mean? It means that what is impossible with man is possible with God. So when you look at your life, you have to stop trying to figure everything out by yourself. You got to stop putting your own life into your own hands. Your power is limited. Give it to God whose power is unlimited. And then you will stop being frustrated and then you'll be able to see that my life is actually getting better. Why? Because you are living purpose and not just purpose because no matter what, even if it's me or Benny singing, the purpose of the mic is being accomplished, but the potential is being hindered. So some of you are in purpose but are still hindered. Some of you are doing some things but you're hindered because you're trying to do it by yourself. You're trying your best to do it by yourself. So why do we find it hard to trust? Number one, we are so focused on current situations and not on God's promises. You're, you're always looking at what's going on in life now, and you can't, look, you can't look ahead and say, this is what God said about my life. It happened to the Israelites. The Lord opened the sea for them. They saw with their own eyes. When they got to the wilderness, they started asking questions, and they couldn't see the fact that God said, there is a land waiting for you that is flowing with milk and honey. But because of their unbelief, a whole generation could even enter. Because they were focused on their current situation and not the future. Look, when Donald Trump became president of the United States of America, I said, with God, anything is possible. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not afraid anymore. Look, if Donald Trump, who's an actor, a businessman, and just stood up one day, said, so I'm going to run for president, and they gave it to him, bruh, your life is not sorry. Get up and keep walking. <laughs> no, bro, think about it. Let me tell you something. Just to get a government job, they have to do a background check and check your credit. Just to get top security, they go and ask for every, they talk to all your boys, all your family members, just to make sure you're a correct person. Right? But think about it. Donald Trump has had several bankruptcies. How can this man even pass a top security clearance? Sometimes I think about these things. I say that don't let the limitations of man stop you from dreaming big. Because if other people have done it, it's too easy for God because God specializes in things that man has never done before. So you must come to a place where you trust God. Don't look at, oh man, I failed this test. I don't. What is one test to the big picture that God has for your life? What is financial aid to, the, to God when God has something great for your life and you're worried about, I can't pass this class. I can't even go to school because of financial aid. Sister, if God can find money in a fist, he can find money for you anywhere. This is the God I trust in. It's not stories to me, but I've experienced him that there have been some difficult situations in my life. But when I put my trust in him, he made a way where there seemed to be no way. So don't look at your current situation because the more you look at that, then you begin to sink. The Bible says that when Peter looked at the ocean, he began to sink. But as his gaze was upon Jesus, he began to float. I pray for you that whatever you are going through, may you be able to stay focused on to Jesus. The Bible says that my help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who made the heavens and earth. David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills for which cometh my help. My help cometh from from the Lord. What are you looking at? Ask your neighbor, what are you looking at? Sometimes you look at your financial aid bill. If you keep staring, the thing will scare you. I'm telling you, 
if you look at it and look at the word of God, you'll be able to tell that my God is bigger than this bill. What are you looking at? What seems to be, if you see that the mountain is big, you are telling God indirectly that you're not big enough for this mountain. So you look at your current situation and you say, I can't trust God. Number two, because we don't want to be disappointed and we don't want to be taken out of our comfort zone. Some of you are too comfortable. Kobe, some people, they are just they're too comfortable. They, they, just, they don't want to be bothered. They, they, they don't want to try anything. They're afraid. They don't want to take any risk. They're afraid that if they step out, it won't work. Ladies and gentlemen, we serve a God who has called us in the world a world that hates us. There is no way a Christian can be comfortable in America. In this world, let's just say all together. In a world where you go to Ghana, if you don't live by bribe, you can't live. In Ghana, I'm telling you, you, if you don't bribe people, you are not going to make it. But with God, all things are. Christians, I have to bribe this guy so that I can get a contract. Is your life in God's hands or in your own hands? Uh, if I don't sleep with her, she said that she can't wait until marriage. You know, usually they say boys can't wait. But girls too, they can't wait too. It's, it's an everybody thing. Oh, she won't wait. So what should I do? Should I sleep with her? Should I sleep with him? Tell him, is your life in your hands or in God's hands? We don't want to be disappointed. Sometimes some of you, I feel like I've been disappointed, disappointed, and my life is full of disappointment. Ladies and gentlemen, a day to God is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day unto God. Let, when God shines his light on you, listen, Dolly, when he shines his light on you, he makes up for all the other years of disappointment. Amen. Trust me when I say this. I'm not saying this because I wrote it down. I'm saying this because I've experienced and I've read it in his word. That some of y'all just don't want to be scared. I was reading the scripture. I mean, the, the men who were reading, uh, we said we were doing a challenge. And I read a scripture, and the Bible says that God was calling Paul. And when he called Paul, he said, Paul, uh, and Ananias, help this man. Help him out. Clean him up. But Ananias was scared. He said, I don't want to help him because I've heard so much about him. But God said, please. It doesn't matter what other people have said about him. Bring him close because I want to show him how he will suffer for my name. And that's when I realized, I was like, Charlie, God calls people to suffer. And that's when I realized that our purpose may never match up to what we would want God to do. But as long as I'm in his hands, I don't worry. Even if he's called me to suffer, it will be better for me to suffer in his name to live richly in the world. I'm telling you. Even in suffering, I can find peace. But some of us, we can't step out with God because we don't want to be disappointed and we don't want to be taken out of our comfort zone. So how do we trust God? Number one, have faith. Somebody say have faith. Have faith. Somebody say have faith. have faith. Have faith. Trust God. The Bible says that faith cometh by the hearing and the hearing of the word of God. So if you want to trust God more, read his word. Read his, when you read his word, then you grow in faith. When you have faith, when he tells you to step out into the water and you will float, then you have enough faith built up to step out. The reason why we can't roll with God is because we don't have enough word to walk with him. We think everything God calls us to do is weird because it's foreign to us. But if you read your word more, you would become regular to it. So read your word. As basic as it sounds, it's the best advice I could give you. That make sure you get in your word every day. Study your word. Highlight. Write it down. Memorize it. Re just retain it in your system. Because the Bible even says, thy word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The word helps you from, from, keep you from sinning. The word helps you step out into life with God. It helps you to trust God. But number two, I like this. It says, intentionally cast your cares upon him. When you have anxiety, when you are going through depression, don't go and call everybody else. Look, try to cast your cares upon Jesus. For he cares for you.
And when you begin to cast your cares upon him, then he begins to help you. He begins to lighten your load. He begins to counsel you. He begins to tell you what is to come. He begins to massage you. He begins to lay you in green pastures. He lays you beside still waters. He becomes your great shepherd. He takes care of you. But first, you've got to open up and you've got to be vulnerable. The issue is that we're not vulnerable with God. So we come to a person that already knows what's going on and we still act fake. And we know the most annoying thing in this world is when you know somebody's lying about something and they look right in your face and they still lie. How much does God, the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So it means that when you come to him, say, Lord, I'm good, but you know you're dealing with something. And he's saying, just open up and surrender. Because he's looking at you and he's probably like, just cast your cares, bro. You're struggling. I see you every day. Sis, you're struggling. I see you every day. But you can trust me. Open up. Somebody say open up. The last thing is humble yourselves. Psalm 25 verse 9. If you can have that scripture. Psalm 23 verse 9. Humble yourself. This one is a big one for me. I must humble myself because I don't know everything. I don't know everything that's going on in my life. I don't know what is to come. So I humble myself. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I should dwell in the, sorry, no, that, I asked for it. Sorry, Psalms 25, verse 9. Psalm 25, verse He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. That's what God does for us who humble ourselves. He teaches us his way. If you want to be led by God and you want to, to God to show you his path for your life. Try humbling yourself. The thing is that sometimes we think we know more than God, and we don't. Sometimes we think that we can tell him, God, the girl is good. I remember I was, I was sitting there one time you know, in a previous relationship, and I was telling God that I, I felt like I had to go, but I had so many other reasons why I didn't feel like I, I could go. And I said, but God, she's good. Yeah, she may be good, but not good for you. There's a purpose. No, I'm not trying to be mean, but I just really want us to understand that. Sometimes we have to understand that just because something is good doesn't mean it's right for you. And we only understand these things when we humble ourselves. But if we come before God and begin to tell him what we think, then we leave him no room to direct our path. So this year, try your best to humble yourself. When you go before him, don't go with the list. Go empty and say, Lord, write down what you have for me. And not just that, but show me your way. Because when we come to a place where God sees that we're humble, the Bible says, and then he will what? Lift us up. So when you see the lifting of men, it's not because they know everything. It's not when they got to God, they forgot everything and said, Lord, lead your way. When you see men lifted, it is because they've become light in pride and the Lord has lifted them. Some of you are in the same place with all the pride inside of you. You're too heavy to be lifted. You step on the weight. You may look small in pounds, but when it comes to pride, 6,000 pounds. I watched this show. Has everybody seen this show, 600 pounds something? Bro, I watched that show on Friday in Atlanta. I was like, what kind of show is Jesus? Some people are big old. And it's, and it's, and it's sad. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's sad. And I was there. And that's another story. But I was there and I was just kind of like, somebody can sit there and just get big and big. But the same thing is that some of us can sit there and watch life pass us by because of our pride. While we look at other people, how could they? You know, sometimes we look at people because we're not walking in their shoes, we judge them. But when we look at your life, you should be looking and evaluating your own life. That why is everything passing me by? Why is God not working in my life? Ask yourself, do I have pride? Do I weigh so much in pride that as God is lifting me, he's not able to? My prayer for you is that may we have trust in God. That as the year is just starting, it's the first month we're going through. Make sure that you trust in the Lord with all your heart. That you lean not on your own understanding because your own understanding will limit your potential. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be on your feet. Let's pray.
I want us to lift up a prayer, and our prayer today is, Lord, I'm tired of governing my own life. If truly you are the Lord of my life, give me the ability to be able to let go. The thing is that you're not bad. You're not bad. You too, you're not bad. The thing is that the potential we have not been able to see is because you're controlling your life too much. People get jobs and they change their resume because they think that if they do that, that's how they get their job. Trust me, look. Look, I look, there was something my wife told me one time, man. I was looking for a job so bad I needed money. And I said, baby, this is the way they said I'll get a job. I was changing my resume left and right. My wife was like, bro, chill out. If God said he's going to do it, trust him. Because if one day you want to testify about your job, you will not be able to. Can you tell them that you lied? Can you tell them that, oh, this is what I put on my resume. No, you won't say that because you cover it up just to say that, oh, but God has been good. Praise the Lord. I'm here to testify. What a lie. But when you trust in God, ladies and gentlemen, look, the job I have now, I don't have the qualifications for. But every time we go for meetings, everybody clap for you. Everybody clap. How was that? So it's because the favor of God has led me. Tell, I'm not. I'm not making a, a, a fairy tale. I'm, I'm pushing against the grain. If everybody's changing their resume, don't follow them. Oh, can I get an amen? amen. Oh, are you guys scared or something? Are you changing your resumes too? <laughs> no, but I'm serious, guys. If God says you will eat in this world, you shall eat. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. I was telling Elder Sam something that, man, I sleep well because I owe nobody nothing. The only thing I owe is my mortgage and I'm fine with that. But I don't owe anybody a thing. The only thing I owe is my praise and worship to my father because he made a way. That's it. Echo. My boss, you know how I got my job? Hey, I came to your program. And I see you're able to bring thousands of people together. You're good at marketing. Yes, I'm good. Okay, no problem. Let me give you the job. Simple. What? Tell it. That's when we say, say, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. We know what we're talking about. Where your qualifications on a resume don't speak for you, but your life speaks for you. Who gave me true worshipers? It was God. And God used that same ministry to establish my family. And I pray that may the Lord establish you as well. May he establish you that don't go the way that everybody else is going, but go the way he wants you to go so that when you sleep, you sleep well. Sometimes people, they call me, yeah, right now, you know, so the HR may call me and then they may be say, hey, how do you have to worry about that? So now we are praying prayers against HR. Father, any witch in HR, what witch? How is she a witch? She's just doing her job. That one lady that does not know. So sometimes we are wasting our prayers. <laughs> oh, somebody say mercy. We are saying, Lord, please, may my life be in your hands. May my life be in your hands. Lead me. I don't want to be afraid. Show me the way. Show me the path. If you did it for Abraham and Sarah, you can do it for me. Lift up your voice and pray.